Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be reviewing Creepshow. Creepshow is based on the 1950s EC horror comic books. This horror movie is a horror fanboys and girls dream come true, an all-star lineup of horror icons working on the same movie together. You have George Romero, Stephen King, Tom Savini, a great expendable lineup. Creepshow is one of my favorite horror movies, one of the best horror anthology horror movies ever made. It's also one of my favorite 1980s horror movies. Creepshow was directed by George Romero, one of his few other horror movies he directed outside of his zombie movies. This movie shows that George Romero could have directed more than zombie movies, but I guess because studios typecast him as a horror director thinking that he can only direct horror zombie movies. Usually I like to explain the basic plot storyline, who are the stars of the movie, but this movie has not one, but five stories. I'll explain each one, talk about the themes, analysis, characters, modus, dilemmas, dynamics, and relationships. This movie opens up with a father being a mean jerk and abusive to his son, does not respect his love for horror, throws his horror comic book out in the garbage bag, sends him to his room for punishment, and has a great animated sequence opening scene. This has been pointed out as a metaphor in how back in the 1950s, when people thought that horror comic books were bad, and did very harm, thinking that was a reason why kids grow up to be violent. Similar how in today's modern day world and society, thinking how video games are the cause of violence when you think about it, and see the connection. Two years ago in 2020, I did a short brief review of this movie on my friend's Christian's channel, Cantel1408. Our friend Jeremy, who you've seen on my channel before, my brief review, he explained he got into trouble by the school for talking about Stephen King's It. Two years ago in 2020, I did a brief, short, brief review of this movie on my friend's channel, Christian, Can't Tell 1408. Our friend Jeremy, who you've seen before in the past on my channel, before my brief review in that video, he explained how he got into trouble by the school for talking about Stephen King's It. The school told his parents, no more horror, which is bullshit. I'll leave a link in the description of that video where he explains the whole story. I had a similar experience like this when I was a kid growing up. In 2004, when I was 11 years old in the 6th grade, I got into trouble for telling one of my teachers I watched the original Halloween movie from 1978. And that was pre-Rob Zombie remakes at that time. And she was like, you're not allowed to watch those movies. Looking back, I think to myself, one, she was not my parent. And two, why would she care? I was one of her students for five days a week, eight hours a day. And whatever I did or whatever I watched outside of school was not her business. So after that, I never told her I watched horror movies behind closed doors secretly. For the record, that teacher's name was Mrs. Ott. She retired around that time and went from 6th grade to middle school. I was one of her last students. You're probably asking yourself, what does that have to do with Creepshow? Well, as a horror fan, horror seems to get a bad rep. That opening scene reminds us what horror fans like me and my friends go through, being judged for loving horror movies. Something I can relate to with that kid in the opening scene, even as I get older. The first time I saw a creep show was back in 2012 when I was a freshman at Suffolk County Community College. I took this freshman seminar class. It was a class on being successful as a student at college, how to set good time management skills and study skills, etc. I had to do an assignment for the class and I had two options. One was going to a sporting event or join a club activity and write an essay about my experience. At that time, I didn't have time in my schedule to go to a sporting event, so I thought, I'll go join a club activity instead. At first, I was going to join the uh, physical therapy club at that time. That's what I was considered major in pursuing at that time. I thought to myself, maybe this will be a good start and experience. When I looked into the club, it was not what I expected, so I went back to the campus activities and looked at my other options and saw Horror and Science Fiction Club because... Being a fan of horror and sci-fi movies, thinking this would be suitable for me right up my alley. I got a text message from the club president telling me what day, building room, and what time they met up at. So I went to the uh, club meeting, and the movie they were watching was Creepshow. That was the first time I ever saw or knew what Creepshow was in the horror and sci-fi club in my college. Then again, that club showed me, introduced me to other like horror movies I didn't even know existed or were possible at that time. From that moment, I was hooked and loved the movie right away. Since then, I've come back to rewatch it over and over again. And it's true they say, they don't make movies like this anymore. You can also point out this movie as a comic book movie, but horror comic book movie. But I'm not sure you would be in the same like category as comic book movies because it's not a superhero comic book movie. Also, looking back, thank God I did not join the uh, physical therapy club. It was not for that. I would not have been treasurer, vice president, president of the club. 
and want to do great things for that club and go on amazing field trips. And would not have met people I made friends within that club that I still keep in touch with to this day. I also would not have met my friend, college professor Bill Burns, that you've seen on this channel a few times, who has been a great friend and mentor for me. This movie does a great job paying tribute to the original EC comic books come to life. I love sick twist dark humor in this movie it has. The first creep show story to this movie we will talk about is Father's Day. Stephen King wrote this for the movie. It's not based on any of the uh, comic book storylines. Despite I have not read much of the uh, EC horror comic books, I understand some of these stories are based on famous comic book storylines from the EC comic books. This is a good opening story. This shows how even the rich are very dysfunctional and worse than the average of middle-class American family. This family relates and relevant in today's modern world on the rich in some ways, especially how when you see all the crazy drama, dysfunctional news, and rumors on rich reality TV show stars. You also get the sense in hand that the father was abusive to the daughter. This is theme on father abuse. We know the father was murdered, and yet he was an abusive prick to his daughter. You either feel sorry or you don't feel sorry for him, for the deceased father. Ed Harris is in this movie, not his first, one of his early movie roles before he was a famous star at that time. It's so funny when the deceased father comes back wanting his cake. I want cake! And he gets it. <laughs> This story reminds me of the episode from Night Gallery, which is a short-lived Twilight Zone spin-off show that did not last very long. The first episode, Cemetery, the nephew murders his uncle for his inheritance, and he sees photo painting of his uncle coming back from the dead. This is a great intro to the story to set the rest of the movie. The second story to Creep Show is The Lonesome Death of Jordy Varel. This one stars Stephen King, and it amazes me how like, this guy who wrote some of the scariest horror stories like the Shining, Salem's Law, Carrie, Pet Cemetery, Misery, It, Cujo, Christine, and so many other great horror stories. In this movie, his acting performs this goofy, campy, over-the-top cartoon. He acts like a combination of Jim Carrey and Jerry Lewis combined together. I get it, that's the whole idea, especially having the original EC comic books. They were known for their dark, sick, twist sense of humor. When I first saw this, I didn't like his performance, but as I got older... I learned to appreciate his performance more. It's grown on me just a little bit, but this one is still not one of my favorite stories of this part of the movie. But that's just me. Stephen King plays a farmer who finds this unknown alien object that came from outer space, and he thinks it will make money for him being rich and has visions of it. When he opens up the meteor and stuff gets on his body, he has a different vision of being a laboratory experiment, being an experiment for the rest of his life with this unknown substance on his body. In some ways, this kind of reminded me of the scene in the original Blob when the old man finds the unknown alien liquid goo and he gets infected by the Blob. I don't know why, when he turns into a green monster, he looks like the Grinch a little bit. <laughs> this one is okay. It's not that I hate it. It's not one of my favorite stories in the movie. It's a little bit funny, goofy, campy, over the top, but in a good way. At the same time, whenever I rewatch this movie, I don't skip this part. If you like this short story of the movie, that's fine, by all means. This is just my own personal opinion about why I have like mixed feelings on this uh, little short story in the movie. The third creep show story, Something Tied Down. As I mentioned earlier before in this video about me joining my horror and sci-fi club at my old college, this was playing in the middle of the club activity when I first joined that day. This is my first glimpse of the movie, one of my favorites of the stories in this movie. But it didn't occur to me at the time this was a uh, horror anthology movie, and I thought this was a whole feature storyline. Before I had this movie had more than, like, one story. Leslie Nielsen, Shirley can't be serious. I am being serious, don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Having grown up watching his comedy movies like Airplane and other movies, this was probably the first time I ever saw him do a serious role, not knowing at the time that he was a serious actor before doing comedy. He's great in this movie. It shows how he really was a great series actor, not just a funny guy, but then again. This was his last series role he did before he died, before doing comedy, up until he died in 2010. May he rest in peace. He's really scary in this. He's brutal, ruthless, tortures Ted Danson's character and his wife psychologically and punishes them very harshly. Leslie Nielsen was really frightening in this movie. Seeing Ted Danson and his girlfriend's characters, like, head stuck up on the beach sand, really terrifying torture to watch. You could say this is a little bit of a torture porn right here, but this movie does not count as a torture porn in the uh, horror movie subgenre. I used to joke, why not they did their way out with their hands, but it doesn't work like that. It's too hard to dig out of sand depending on how deep your like body is. Just when we think that Leslie Nielsen character is like one in the end and killed Ted Danson and his wife, 
They come back looking like zombies from Creature from the Black Lagoon and telling him, You can hold your breath underwater. <laughs> it ends with his face with the same as Ted Danton, his girlfriend's whole body, head above the sand. It's true what they say. Payback is a bitch. <laughs> I really watched that scene being like, I'm laughing and I'm terrified at the same time. But at the same time, Leslie Nielsen's character deserved what he got. The fourth story to Creep Show is The Crate. This is my second favorite of the stories. Hal Holbrook is married to Adrian Barbeau. She is such a bitch and an alcoholic drunk in this movie. Her famous catchphrase that she says throughout the entire story is, Harry, what would you do without me? <sighs> Harry fantasizes on killing his wife. Can't blame her for that because she's so mean and not nice. But he's afraid to murder her because of knowing the consequences of murder and that he cannot get away with murder unless he got creative. It's funny and crazy when we see like Harry's like fantasies when you think he actually killed his wife. It's a twist where we see how it was like all in his head. This story has themes on unfaithful love failed marriages when trying to end a marriage but too afraid to stand up for yourself. It's also reversed how Barbeau's character is abusive toward her husband. After finding the monster in the crate at the university, Harry says of a great plan to trap and finally get rid of what he wants. I won't spoil it, give it a watch. This story is highly ranked on my top favorite like stories of this movie. The fifth and final story to Creep Show is They're Creeping Up On You. This one was not based on any of the comic books, it was written from the movie. E.G. Marshall's character is a real asshole racist piece of shit. He treats his employees like shit, does not respect, and thinks he's better than everybody else, and above all people. A stereotypical rich jerk, but that's what the story reflects on racism. The bugs are a metaphor for racism, African Americans. In the end, this character gets what he deserved, and it's not a big loss. This short story also has like social commentary on class, corporate corruption, on controlling their employees because they can. When he complains about a cockroach problem, the exterminator is on vacation in Disney World, and he tells him to come back as soon as possible, or he'll be fired within like a day or five minutes, just like that. No disclaimer, if you hate bugs, skip this one, you'll be a little grossed out. I love the end of this movie where Tom Atkins' character, his son uses voodoo on his dad for getting rid of his horror comic book. Perfect revenge from his son. Tom Savini plays a garbage man, finds the comic book, keeps it for himself. There were two sequels to this movie. Last year I watched the second one for the first time. It was okay. It's not bad, not great, it's just okay, it doesn't really top the first movie. It was decent, it only had three stories. Not something I've come back to rewatch over and over again. No rush to review it on this channel, someday in the near future, just not yet. It did once again have a cool opening animation sequence, that's all I remember about the movie. The third one I never saw, I read that King, Romero, and Savi were not involved in it, and that says enough for me to never check it out or ever consider watching it. My friend Christian on his YouTube channel, Cantel1408, did a good review on that movie explaining how bad it was. Go check it out. Link in the description. He told me that a Tales from the Dark Side movie from 1990 is really considered somewhat to be considered the real Creepshow 3. There's a current show on Shudder called Creepshow recently, but I've not seen that show. This is a great horror anthology horror movie that will never be beaten in its golden. A must-watch horror movie, you love 80s horror movies, give it a watch. So that was my review of Creep Show. Like the video, subscribe to the notification bell to get the latest updates on my YouTube channel. And I will see you tomorrow for another horror movie review. Stay tuned.